Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's Friday during lockdown, and I am once again privileged to share faith with you. Our scripture reading for the Mass of today, the Gospel passage that is, comes from John 15, 12 to 17. I am going to recommend that you read John 15, 9 to 17. John 15, 9 to 17. Read it slowly and prayerfully so that you can benefit from treasuring the Word of God. Uh, the precise text is um, listed in the accompanying uh, text that um, I normally put out with these video clips. The verse prior to the passage of the Gospel today introduces the passage and links this passage to the preceding verses. It both looks back to what was before and looks ahead to what is to come. It states that Jesus spoke these things to us so that his joy may be in us and that our joy may be complete. The two verses prior to that informs us that Jesus has loved us just as the Father has loved him and encourages us to remain in his love by keeping his commandments, just as he remains in the Father's love by keeping the Father's commandments. Obedience to the divine word thus becomes the means of our union with God. In John 15, 11, Jesus says, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. The term for spoken indicates a permanent and effective utterance that could never ever be cancelled. With Christ, his declaration is permanent. All that is needed is for it to be actualized in the hearts of believers. John 15, in John 15, 12, we are encouraged to love one another as Christ has loved us. Jesus explains what this love means by saying that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. All through these verses, the word for love refers to the self-sacrificial love demonstrated on the cross. There are four words for love in Greek, and the cross represents the highest form of love. It is totally selfless and is characterized by humility. This is how we are called to imitate Jesus. Jesus says quite directly that we are his friends if we do what he commands us. This is an invitation to examine how we carry out his commands and to make sure that we follow Jesus for what he did say and not for what he did not say. There are too many false claims made in his name, as some tend to forget that Jesus does not want admirers, but followers. He did not come to form a fan club, but wanted disciples who could imitate him and take God's love into the world. He then gives us the model of perfect friendship. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have learned from my father. Let's consider this for a while. We tend to use the word friend rather loosely. But are our friends really friends? Or are they acquaintances? If we take the model that Jesus gives, then only those to whom we reveal our true selves are our friends. Yes, during the pandemic, we have to wear masks, but in authentic relationships, such as marriage, spiritual direction, etc., what is needed is for us to be unmasked, to allow ourselves to be seen. Jesus calls us friends because he has made known to us all that the Father has shown him and all that
that the Father has shown him is Jesus himself, complete and unadorned. It is only when we can reveal our true selves to others that they can become our friends. It is not a sin not to have as many friends as we would like to have. While we are called to be neighborly and show friendship and consideration to others, in real life we will have varying degrees of association with many acquaintances and also some friends. Why do I say this? Simply because all of us in our daily communications function between revealing and concealing. For example, we do not say in public what we say to our spiritual directors, spouses, lawyers, doctors and special friends. This does not in any way mean that we should not be friendly and neighborly to those who cross our paths. It simply means that we need to be prudent. The passage ends with Jesus indicating that he has given us these commands in order that we may love one another. This love that he speaks of is based on our union with him and is at the same time our means of imitating him. There are many subtle indications in the passage which show this. It is good to know all that, but the ultimate aim of the text, with all its nuances, is that our hearts should expand so that the love of Christ may expand in us. That's a thought that comes from St. Eugene de Mazenod, the father of the Oblates. All our relationships, whether they reveal or conceal, ought to make Christ more lovable to those who we encounter. This is called spreading the gospel. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the love which you show us in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Give us the grace to imitate you more closely in his offering of himself for others. Help us to give practical example to this love by becoming servants to each other. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you, your homes and your families forever. Stay in peace, stay well, and stay safe.